I'm happy that most of you decided to stay for the last series of uh, presentations. You also get a chance to see the jacket my wife specially made for Gravanacon. <laughs> and uh, we can start with a good read. Uh, it essentially means that if you want to uh, invest your salary in the uh, energy industry, you should not base it on the graphs you're about to see in the next 15 minutes. So here's me. I uh, started in, in IT when I still got uh, a lot of uh, curly dark hair left. Uh, the rest is history, and my recent history at Shell is uh, mainly about uh, technical user, user support, construction of a uh, Linux platform, and monitoring. Monitoring in storage, and monitoring Linux, and some more. We'll go. We're about to see. So we are Shell. Shell is big. And the data we are managing is especially for the part of Shell that does uh, exploration. Uh, scanning the Earth, finding possible energy sources, and if found, uh, drilling and uh, exploring. And also for the part of Shell that supports the exploration process, meaning um, that's, that's the, the people doing the science, uh, developing the tools, uh, all the platforms we need, etc. Our storage is everywhere. We're uh, in a number of places around the, around the globe. Uh, our team is also um, uh, follows this, this organization uh, scheme. Uh, the data we are managing is uh, seismic, partly. It's a 2 day, 3D, 4D time shifts. We all love time shifts, except that this is going back millions and millions of years. And um, we also have uh, weather information for forecasts. This, uh, that's why this presentation touches that of uh, Stefan and Max. And um, sea currents, um, we try to predict where icebergs are uh, uh, going, these trajectories. And all that technical data is stored on our clusters. The clusters are uh, the product called Isolon by Dell EMC. And essentially, they're only um, Intel-like nodes, computers with uh, a lot of memory, uh, optimized for I.O. And, uh, and a funny price tag. Well, funny. It's, uh, it's a good product. They're optimized uh, very, very well. Anybody can create a storage cluster. You take a number of nodes, take an open source package, and there you go with the cluster. But if you want to serve a lot of clients, then performance is really an issue. And that's where Isolon comes in. It does a lot of caching. We have nodes dedicated for serving clients with copies of metadata of files and folders and there's a number of nodes in the cluster only serving a big uh, blocks of, of data. The implementation, we have this, this Isilon product has an interface, management interface over HTTPS. It's using that to uh, manipulate the data, uh, giving the built-in uh, uh, GUI to manage the storage, and we can also use it to retrieve metrics from the system. And that's where this product, Isolon Data Insights Connector, is doing. It's a GitHub uh, located project. It, uh, it's Python based, Python scripts, Python libraries, uh, extracts data, and stores it into InfluxDB. That's uh, the plugin they provide, it's a preferred platform. We can use any other time uh, management database, but this one works very well, and we are happy with the way it's integrated into Grafana. And then how you implement it. If you start installing software on the, on the Linux node, in this case on a virtual machine, it's easy to clutter the machine. It gets, it gets dirty. You need different versions of, of uh, libraries, of, of packages, etc. The best thing is to put them in containers. Small, confined containers, nothing more than, than you really need. Well, as it happens, Docker is part of our uh, Linux standard platform, so it's obvious to, to implement. And the best thing is, Grafana, as well as InfluxDB, have ready-made containers. The only Docker image to build was the data collector, and that wasn't a big deal. We do not use orchestration. If you have only three containers on a single virtual machine, that's, that's not, not required. But as soon as we start to 
run these servers anyway on the cloud, then Kubernetes is, is the preferred platform. Certainly now, uh, Docker as well as Grafana uh, support this very well. This is an overview of the way we are collecting data. We could have implemented a uh, global, distributed, um, high uptime, whatever, uh, InfluxDB layer. We didn't. We chopped the map of the world in three, um, installed the machine in each of the three parts, and put all three containers on them. So every collector on the, the, the machine is collecting data from all clusters. So if anything happens, we're only missing a little bit of information on one of the systems. It's easy, and we can work with it. The way we're viewing data, um, there is a web server built into to Grafana, to Node.js. It, it's okay, but I didn't want to implement it directly on the platform. I pr prefer uh, a proxy server I know well. And as it happens, the LDAP support is, is very good in Grafana. So the best way forward was to implement the, uh, uh, the, the Apache web server as an LDAP uh, proxy. It hooks up to our authentication system, and I don't have to invent usernames, passwords, uh, etc. It's all clear for me. The only thing to administer is a small list of people on the uh, Apache web server, the standard, uh, um, the standard way of naming lists people that have uh, uh, access to the uh, proxied content. And it's, I think, a little bit more secure. So, this product, this data collector, is provided with a number of example dashboards, and we use them as examples to, well, to make something for ourselves. And we have four important dashboards defined. This one is with single stats. It's um, one storage cluster per line, so it's, it's a pretty big dashboard by now because we haven't many clusters. A second column is uh, showing the health parameter of, the, of, of Isilon. It turns orange when a single disk is broken or when a job is failing, and it goes red when a full node drops out of the cluster. The first field is clickable. If you click that, you get details of a, a single cluster. But then everything you need. This is only part of it. Also, there are kernel-like parameters in a number of rows that are further down this, um, this dashboard. And here is the, the workhorse dashboard. This one is the most popular. Um, it's so that um, a lot of people in, in the morning uh, process, when they start up the, uh, their computer, they take a coffee, they start up Nagios, and they start this dashboard. Some people develop the skill to read these, these graphs. They, they are seeing things that, that, that I'm, I'm missing. If, if something's going on, if, if a job timing is wrong, if there's a certain client activity anywhere, people see it. This has been very, very helpful. And then my favorite hobby, a table overview. The problem is nobody's using it, well, except me every now and then. This is one of the few ways we have to look at the, at the node level, the individual uh, node level of the, of the cluster. It shows the number of client connections. It's, it's gray when nothing is connected. Those are the, the, the bulk storage nodes. It's, it's green in the, the regular ballpark and gets red when, when overloaded. And then there are specials. Some special dashboards. Um, this is showing the uh, storage capacity. The top one is showing a cluster, a new cluster that's being provisioned from zero to almost half a petabyte in, uh, um, well, on the short time, time scale. And on the bottom, you see a bump, a sudden bump in capacity, and that's the moment we decided to add a number of nodes to an existing cluster. And we developed a skill of, of, of reading graphs. It has been uh, dealt with by, uh, by several other presenters during uh, these uh, this sessions. Um, so what, what can you see? What, what can you read? What, what's normal? We have uh, working days, and people using the SIFS protocol for, for Windows clients open up their, uh, their laptop, start working at the beginning of the day, close it at the end, and therefore, you see, with five working days per week, you see these 
five finger patterns. And another week, and another, and another, unless there are public holidays. On the top graph, uh, next to the two uh, shorter fingers in the middle, is the 4th of July in America. In the middle is the holiday season in Europe, Christmas and, and New Year. And the bottom one is, uh, uh, how shall I say it? If you like public holidays, consider a, uh, a job in Malaysia. So how do you read graphs? Uh, th the thing is to, 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 to match certain patterns and see if, if something is, is different, if it is not following the pattern, there's probably something at hand. At this one, even at the back of the audience, you, you can see there's a, a sudden boost of activity on this cluster. And almost all the panels are following that pattern, except um, middle row on the right. That's a network. It has its pattern it, it had before this, this job was running. Uh, this is a typical measure we can see here, it is an internal job. It's, nothing, it's not a thing uh, initiated out of, outside of the cluster, it's just intern. Also nice to see is a middle row left panel that we are writing more blocks than we are reading. That's because of the uh, redundancy in the cluster. About the same thing is the next one. There's also something going on, <coughs> except in this case it is middle row left uh, panel, the disk statistics that don't follow the panel. So something is happening, you see a lot on the, the, the bottom one is, uh, is, is, is kernel activity. Uh, there's a lot of data uh, going uh, out of the system, but it's not read from disk. That's a typical uh, a uh, case of caching. And it simply means that somebody is requesting the same data over and over again. In this case, we were looking at the most active clients, and we found out that a number of uh, computer cluster nodes were malconfigured. They usually get a copy themselves and all start working on that. In this case, they forgot it, and all the nodes separately were uh, retrieving the data from the storage cluster. Not a big deal. Uh, Isilon is, uh, is resilient. We can have a lot. I don't even know how far we can go. But in this case, um, they saturated the uplink of 40 gigabit per second. Fortunately, it was nighttime over there. Another one is this. Um, what you're looking at is uh, our, our favorite uh, dashboard and we're showing a seven day period. Top row is a regular, smaller cluster, nothing at hand, very regular. But middle row, left panel, you see an increase in client activity. Lots of client activity. And we were not aware of any changes in the infrastructure, that there must be something. And the bottom row shows um, the, the, the same pattern, but for all individual nodes. So something was happening. And it appeared this was the... People started to roll out a new version of our uh, Linux platform. They included a very nice component that unfortunately kept auto-mounted drives open. And it, uh, because of they didn't release it, this, uh, we got this, uh, this increase. So we called them up and said, oh, stop with this. We have, we have no idea how, where it will end and fix your problem. Well, they fixed our problem me immediately, back to normal. And they're still engineering about this, uh, the solution they want. Well, and sometimes, who cares what it means? Isn't it just nice? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we learned a lot about how our clusters really work. Uh, so there's a number of, of internal jobs, uh, rather, rather complex, and now we get a grasp of how, how, how things are uh, fitting together. Um, we, we, we developed some skills to, to interpret the graphs, and we even contacted the supplier and said, hey, your, uh, your cluster isn't uh, behaving well, and they said, how do you know? I said, well, we got Grafana. And uh, service management. It, it happened one day that we were blamed for our clusters not being available during a weekend, but we could show them, hey, we've been serving clients. So they shut up started to blame the network guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So currently, we are busy to, to, to improve on, on what, we, what we have, and we're looking at, at more ways to, 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 to use Grafana, and uh, we are, how can I say it? it it's a bit like, like the, the oil industry a couple of hundred years ago, where you started drilling and just testing, what, what are we doing? Well, we, have, we are drilling into these uh, storage cluster metrics. We have a very successful proof of concept with uh, Linux operating system data. Um, we're about to drill into a Zabbix database containing data of virtual workstations. And since uh, one of the recent versions of, of Grafana, MySQL is supported, and we have a legacy application that contains years of information about storage volumes, um, their quota, and the way they're utilized. However, <coughs> Uh, try not to laugh at this one. We're sending people whose uh, storage folder is getting filled up a graph like this. So it's telling something like your, your data started here, and then it goes, and then it does. And unfortunately, we don't get a lot of responses to this, uh, these emails. Or an occasional one of someone saying, hey, Mr. Storage, what are you trying to tell me? Now we show them this. Ah, it's full. OK, we start working on it. And that's where it's about. Um, we need a good communication with customers. We, we, we have to work together. And if we show them better information, um, we'll, we'll get a, uh, eventually get a better result. I owe you a, a screenshot of a, a Grafana 5. A uh, light theme dashboard, uh, but uh, I had to skip it. This is just just a, just a random uh, screenshot. Grafana 5 is implemented at the moment, and uh, what we're doing is to get as many people as possible interested in in what's what's going on. So many people are uh, using the dashboards we made specially for them, and we're inviting as many team members as possible to start working on the uh, developing and and changing dashboards themselves. With the Grafana 5 beta, we created a number of folders, subfolders for them, and um, they're starting to work on it. And it, it already pays off. We get a, get a better understanding of what's happening, and uh, eventually it will, uh, it will be a lot better. So, yeah, I can say we're happy with Grafana at Shell. Yes. Great. Thanks, Ari. Uh, I think we have time for one or two questions. Yeah. So during some of the earlier talks, uh, whenever LDAP was mentioned, people were like not happy about it, or even Grafana people were not proud of it. Um, but you seem to be very content with it. And you mentioned at the end that you have um, a use case where, where you try to get as many people to use Grafana as possible. So are you using LDAP for that? And, and what's your you know, wh wh why is it working for you when it's not working for others? Yes, uh, and I, I think one of the previous remarks was that there was no, no LDAP built in to, to, to Grafana to directly tap into a, a LDAP uh, source. But by using this, this authenticated proxy, it's, it's very well possible. There is a uh, Apache module, the, uh, a Kerberos module, which we hook up to uh, Active Directory. And it is doing its job uh, very well. Anyone else? Great. Thank you, Ari. Appreciate it. Okay.